Hi everyone! Finally a clear night here in the south coast of UK, so I wanted to make a video about how I set up my SCT for planetary imaging. This is one of those things that I've often spoken to people about, and it would be really great to just be able to show what I'm actually doing. Um, as always, this is just what I personally do, far from presenting it as the ultimate way of doing things, but it might help somebody get started or just give you an idea on things to do when you're setting up your own telescope for planetary imaging. To start, I'll just answer a few of the most common questions I've had, which were usually from friends who have been doing deep space imaging for a while and wanted to try planetary. Um, some of the staples of deep space imaging are completely the opposite when you're doing planetary. So before I start, here's just a few points about my setup and process. When I'm doing my planetary or lunar imaging, I am out here with the telescope. I'm a complete beginner when it comes to deep space imaging, but even I know how nice it is to be able to control everything from a warm sofa. People with more forgiving skies and more accurate mounts can probably manage it for planetary as well, but I use the handset and I really force the telescope to get the most out of it so there is no remote control. The upside is that imaging is really fast, so you're not out here for hours. And to continue from that, there is also no guiding and no polar alignment necessary. The second thing is that there is no back focus to worry about in planetary. You're not looking for a flat field. In fact, you want as little unnecessary glass in your imaging train as you can get. So just take the one and a quarter inch nose piece that came with the camera and slot it right into the visual back. SCTs have loads of focus travel, so whatever you add to the imaging train will be fine. I, in this video, I'm going to use a power mate, a type of Barlow, and an atmospheric dispersion corrector, so you'll see how all of that slots in as well. As always, just a quick run through the equipment, just so you can see what I'm using and maybe compare it against what you're using. I've got my Celestron SCT here. It's a nine and a quarter inch tube on a double fork altazimuth mount, but the principle will be the same, I imagine, no matter which one you use. I'll be using the handset. Um, the mount has inbuilt GPS, but you can put in the time and date yourself. For the camera, I've got my usual planetary workhorse, the ZWO ASI 662 color. Um, it has a UV and infrared cut filter at the front, and it needs it because this camera doesn't have one inbuilt, like many planetary cameras, so maybe have a quick check of yours and see if yours needs it too. I don't always use a PowerMate as a type of Barlow, but for the sake of this video, I'll include it. And also I'll use an atmospheric dispersion corrector. This is just a cheap one from ZWO that I've got here. I'm going to start with the telescope already having been outside for over two hours to acclimatize and it's been collimated. Ideally, I like to leave the camera and power mate outside a bit to cool down as well. So I've got my camera slotted in here into the visual back and SharpCap Pro open. And I'm going to select solar system align on the handset. So when I get Saturn in view, I'm going to use it to align the telescope to it. And one small tip, point the camera cable down so that when you do your left, right, up, down movements, it corresponds with what you see on screen. If you're doing this for the very first time, just know that focus can really affect what you can see through the camera. So if you're out of focus enough, you might just be looking at a black screen. Um, unless you know that you are definitely around the focus point, it might be worth using the moon or something really bright to focus on first. When I was doing this for the first time, I was looking around for ages thinking that I was like really off or doing something wrong when actually I was just out of focus enough that I couldn't see anything. Right, I've got the Saturn here tracking and in the center of the widest region of interest in SharpCap, and also I've aligned the finder scope so it's really well centered in it. And the next thing I'm going to add is the atmospheric dispersion corrector or the ADC. There's different opinions on what comes in which order in the imaging train, but I like to put my ADC between the camera and the power mate because ADCs are said to work better on longer focal lengths and also because I find it easier to incorporate into the imaging train when I have that wider field of view. I'm starting with the levers set to zero together, slotting the ADC and camera into the visual back, 
and making sure that the bubble on top is nicely centered. Your image at this point will be defocused and also may have slightly shifted. So I like to up the exposure a bit so I can find the donut more easily. On my SCT, I'm turning the focuser knob counterclockwise to focus now. Once I've found it, I'll bring it to the center of the screen and just roughly focus by eye. I will hold off adjusting the ADC until I've assembled the whole imaging train. And now I'm going to add the Barlow. I'm using a two and a half times power mate here. Um, after you add these, your image will be significantly defocused and also quite a bit darker. So what I like to do is whack my exposure up a little bit just before, just after adding it to the imaging train. It makes it a little bit easier to find. And another thing with these is that they are slightly heavy and they add weight to the imaging train. So if I lean my finger here, you see how the target inevitably goes down? So what I like to do is preemptively put it slightly higher on the, on the capture screen just to make it easier to find afterwards. Um, when it comes to focusing on my SCT at this point, it's a clockwise turn on the focuser knob. And at this point, you want to check your finder scope just to make sure that everything is still really well centered in there. To adjust the ADC, I'll crank up the exposure until the whole of the planet is bright white, and then I'll be able to see the blue and orange caused by the atmospheric diffraction. I find that this ADC can rarely eliminate it completely, so the goal is just to make it better. The levers now go equal distances in opposite directions until the blue and orange are as softened as possible, and they have to be equally apart, so at the same notch. Sometimes I'll focus on one color, correct it as best I can, and then just pull the other lever to the same distance. Just note that moving the levers moves your target significantly on screen, so I always move them really incrementally and use a slow slewing speed on the handset to always recenter it back. Um, once you have your ADC set how you like it, recenter, realign your finder scope because it will be off. Um, this is just in case that you want to slew to another target or your planet disappears from screen for some reason and then it's much easier to find with the help of the finder scope. The last thing before imaging now is to properly focus. I do it by eye. I set the exposure bright enough to see a feature or detail that I can use as a reference. For Saturn, I like to use the space between the planet and the rings. So I slowly turn the focuser knob in and out of focus in both directions a few times, which gives my eyes a chance to develop a better sense of where the middle is. SharpCap Pro has a focus assistant feature that can help, however it is affected by seeing. Those in more stable skies can use this more easily. I just choose Fourier detail detection and basically green is good, red is bad. In the UK, this will jump around a lot because the air wobble will defocus it, but once it clears up, if you're well focused, it will come back to green, so that's what you're looking for. At this point, I'm ready for imaging, so that's it. Uh, I hope this was helpful, or at least gives somebody an idea on how to set up and get started. So clear skies, everyone.